Stanford Athletics Hall of Fame, class of 2018. When I was here, we used to have Education Month, which was the month of May, and it was non-football related. It was purely to develop us as better human beings, to go out and represent Stanford football after we leave Stanford. Um, and it was things such as table etiquette, you know, public speaking, um, leadership uh, lessons, and all of those, I just, I, I look back on it and I'm just blown away. I couldn't be more proud of what Stanford has done and is doing. For elite athletics and elite academics to coexist and be done and be done well is very special. This consistency, this recipe for success, this re recipe to continue to compete at the highest level, I'm proud to be a part of that. Not only just our generation, our group, but also the guys that came before us too, that helped lay that foundation for kind of where Stanford football is on the map. Absolutely, I, it, I pinch myself every day. All the senior events were happening, all the graduation events, so dinner in the quad, all the fun things you hear about people getting to do right before graduation. And for me, I had an extra one on my plate that I was really excited about. I had the chance to actually go hang out and meet Oprah, or what I would have if I was in town. Um, her goddaughter is a, was a friend of mine in, in college, Kirby Bumpus, and it was gonna be such a cool opportunity. And I remember being there at Nationals, getting ready for this last job, being like, I have to make this count. I am missing out on my chance to meet Oprah right now. <laughs> this is, this has to be huge, right? And I used to kind of get nervous. I didn't really actually, surprisingly, like a lot of attention on me at all. Kind of always like to shrink into the background. But my coach, remember, he was so proud. I got the crowd clapping and everyone's into it and just try to like feel all of the energy that I could. And it ended up being the second longest jump ever in U.S. history uh, for women under any conditions and I could not have asked to go out on a better moment. Still got to see Oprah, you know, at least talk to the rest of our classmates. I didn't get to meet her in person, but it was, it was very worthwhile, like harnessing all of that energy into that last jump and I will never forget it. I didn't get a chance to hang out with a lot of athletes um, outside of the track, but the one person I got to spend time with both in the classroom um, and just like hanging out around campus was Candace Wiggins. And it's just so cool that she happens to also be in my Hall of Fame and Dusty class. The sisterhood starts uh, first and foremost uh, with Tara. You know, we are all, the thing that we all have in common as Stanford basketball players is Tara Vanderveer is the coach. And she does such a wonderful job of just laying a foundation so that there's an order that is met with mutual respect. You know, no matter what, we're all connected through Tara's foundation that she set. And then I would say, you know, that first group, that pioneer group, 1990, 1992, Kate Pei, they really were the ones who set that sisterhood tone. And now you've got this culture, you've got this standard. A couple of years before we won the national championship, we were playing down in Pebble Beach at Poppy Hills, and uh, the people down there at Poppy Hills were all enthusiastic about us, and we, got, we were awarded that night, I think it was two years before we won, as the most improved team in America. And that told me right there that we were on the right track with these guys. I made contact with him by mail after I saw his picture and faces in the crowd. So I just wrote him a note, it's the greatest smile I've ever seen, if you think you want to play college golf, give me a ring sometime. And he wrote this letter. And the letter became a famous letter. And uh, that started it. And he was a, a blessing to come to Stanford. He was a blessing to coach. Never a problem. Practiced, always the first guy in the van. No, he was a delightful kid. I loved him. Yes, I was the first NCAA uh, women athlete to win in foil and epee and fencing. Fenced with the guys, and uh, I almost didn't even make it through qualifiers uh, regionally. It was very close, and then I got to the NCAAs and I said, okay, that's it. We're just gonna keep going. And I ended up making it to the finals and beating Steffi Eim, who um, is from Germany, fenced for Penn State, and was on the German junior national team at one point. 
So, and it was so exciting, that last touch. I just, it was, came down literally to the wire in the last few seconds. Stanford is just an amazing place. I mean, there are so many things, there's a very, very long list of things I could say. But I think the most important thing about, you know, preparing me for life would have to be um, about creativity and problem solving. And that's what Stanford brought to me academically, was a way to figure out problems and find solutions, and you don't have to go always the direct route. If, you know, if you're trying to get to a solution, there's multiple ways of getting there, and that's what they taught me, is this freedom and creativity that you can bring to problem solving. It was a life-changing experience swimming here. I, um, you know, from the moment I uh, stepped foot on the team, um, there was a spirit of, um, you know, almost determinism towards the success we were going to have. This sense that together we were going to accomplish something great. The team had last won the NC2As in 1987, and so the 1991 to 92 year was the year that if the seniors didn't win, they were going to go four years without having won a championship. And so it just felt incredibly important to all of us. And so I just. It, it's still, uh, you know, a touchstone in my life um, in terms of being um, an experience that feels like it, there were a group of guys who were dedicated um, completely to a task. Michael Stamber was the California state champion the year before I came to Stanford, and Jonathan was in my class, and all three of us are Olympians. Uh, Brad Hauser was the team captain, also another Olympian. This was like an epic in Stanford history that will stand the test of time. Uh, Vin Lanana, of course, now is the president of USA Track and Field. Uh, he was the, the motivator for our team and the, all the national meets we produced here at Stanford and the, Stanford, the, the running culture. We brought in the farm team from Nike. And all of a sudden, running was really crazy popular at Stanford. So it was a really exciting time to run for Stanford, no doubt. I was very excited when I was recognized with this honor and when they told me that I would be inducted. Um, but I also think it's so much more. Um, you know, I, I saw a number of people be inducted and people that I always looked up to or names that I'd heard of. To think that I'll be among those people is um, pretty special. Uh, but the other thing that struck me was, you know, synchronized swimming is very much a team sport. And so I thought it was pretty awesome for our sport to be recognized. Um, in fact, my duet partner will be um, presenting me with the award tonight. And um, you know, you don't just get there by yourself. And so I think it's very much um, her award as much as it is um, my award. I mean, I was most fortunate to be here and be part of three national championships. And I uh, can't even explain what an incredible experience that was. I think probably my two most vivid memories. Uh, one was my freshman year uh, winning the first gymnastics NCAA team title and um, being part of that team. That was incredible. Uh, I had a, one of my teammates at the time, Jeff Bender, uh, had a special move that he did on high bar and probably made it about 75% of the time. Um, and he was the last one up on the last event and needed a, a hit routine to win the championship. And that moment when he made that trick uh, was phenomenal. Just, I'll never forget everyone jumping up and it was incredible.